those that control the seed control the food. Those that control the food control the population. Tonight we're going to talk about something that hasn't been covered fully in the mainstream media, and that is the genetically modified seed created by Monsanto. Well, it's true. Genetically engineered crops have just been with us since 1996, and now they're really all over America and in many places in the world. And it's really another aspect of the industrial food system, which is controlled by corporations. And the things that are troubling about genetic engineered crops is, for one thing, is that the seeds are patented. So if those seeds get blown into your field, uh, the patent owners could sue you for patent infringement. And also part of this is the buying up, uh, particularly because the patenting is such a powerful device for control, the buying up of seed companies by corporations like Monsanto so that these corporations control most of the seed germplasm on the planet now. And also that uh, genetic engineered crops have not been properly tested. So um, for health, and you know, we are the experiment. So some of these things are troubling to people who are who are paying attention, and they're they're actually um, kind of counter this uh, really wonderful trend, which is you know local, healthy, organic food, which people are so really getting so into. Now, I watched your film for the first time last night, The Future of Food, and for those watching, this is an excellent documentary, uh, and I urge everyone that is concerned about their health, their children's health, their grandchildren's health, to see this movie, Future of Food, or you can go to thefutureoffood.com. I understand this company, Monsanto, with their seeds, have created something that literally can destroy foreign crops, and the seed is also spread by air, and by other insects such as bees and animals. Very disturbing information, Deborah. Yeah, well, you know, genetic engineering, it's funny because I set out making a film about agriculture, and I, in researching the film, I realized that there were these genetically engineered crops out there that is, are made using recombinant DNA technology where you use pieces of virus and viruses and bacteria to move DNA from one species to another. So you can take human genes and put it in rice, which they've done, and fish genes and put them in tomatoes, which they've done. And, and also that this stuff was patented, and also Monsanto buying up the seed supply and all this sort of thing. And I didn't know anything about that. This, I started to film five, five or six years ago, and you know I live in California, I eat organic food, I felt I was a very educated person, and I knew nothing about this. So I realized I, I had to make this film. And I think that, um, you know, people kind of trust that the government, well, I don't know how much they do trust, but, you know, sort of people want to think that our food supply is well, safe. Well, you know, and, and, and that's a good point, because I want to go there with you just, just to set this up. For those that are watching right now, and I've had this conversation with a lot of people, Deborah, what is wrong with eating genetically modified food? Uh, you made a point in your film that it's only been brought to the consciousness uh, of the average American over the course of the last couple of years. And so people really don't know what this does yet. Tell us a little bit about some of the experiments on rats and what they found. Well, they've had, but you know, they haven't done a lot of experiments on these because they were declared when they were trying to get approval for it. Well, we're uh, actually in an experiment, are we not, right now? Yeah, we, we are the experiment. So what they did when they uh, were trying to bring this out and be able to plant it in the fields and serve it in uh, on our plates, was they declared it substantially equivalent to normal food, and so it was really not properly tested. And there have been some tests that show problems with um, rat immune systems and with organ growth rates and various things like that. And, you know, there really hasn't been a, a long-term live a study on, on live subjects. So actually, we are the experiment, and we don't know. And I think that people who are paying attention to the, the general health of our population and the health of, of all our children realize that since the mid-90s, we've had an explosion of obesity, an explosion of diabetes, explosion of, of, of allergies and asthma. I mean, everyone knows on kids' teams now half the kids have asthma inhalers. And the question is, why is that happening? And, you know, why America, which is the most powerful, wealthiest country in history, you know, why do we have all these health problems? Why, and, why? And, and, and supposedly educated for that matter. That's right. So, so who knows what element the genetically engineered uh, crops have in that? You know, there are four crops that are genetically engineered: corn, cotton, soy, and canola. And people of those eat the soy uh, and the uh, corn. 
So if you eat those things, if you eat a soy, um, you should or corn, or corn syrup, or lecithin, or you know, you should try to source organically because organic food is not genetically engineered. So that it, it, genetically engineered food is labeled in in the EU and in some other countries. It's not labeled here, and they they're fighting labeling because they know that if it's labeled. People won't buy it. Uh, the stores won't stock it. The companies won't make it on down the line. Now, we, we've also uh, uh, got a lot of information here pertaining to the changing of the DNA into something unnatural and, as you point out in your film, unpredictable. That's the problem because the recombinant DNA technology creates what they call a genetic cassette. And they link together these elements from various bacteria and viruses and then the DNA of the thing they want to put in there. You know, and they shoot it into. They should use a gun to shoot it in. And and as a as one scientist told me, he said they make you know hundreds of thousands of monsters, and they choose the one that doesn't look like a monster, and, and that's what they clone. <laughs> that's, now, and, that's and this is larger than a, this is larger than a food issue, because if they're patenting this product that that's transported by insects, by air, or by people, or or through the grocery store where Monsanto, as you noted, the majority of the seeds available come from a pesticide company known as Monsanto. Knowing right. that, this becomes a larger issue into the area of land rights. What exactly has well, been happening with, with the disputes between farmers and Monsanto seed? Well, that's the problem. You know, if this stuff gets blown into your yard and crosses with your crop, you can be sued for patent infringement. And that makes no sense to anybody, but that's the way the law works now. Now, that's, that's not paranoia. Working. That's not paranoia yeah, because there's a lot of cases that you brought up. Yeah, it's crazy, and, you know, Monsanto has, has sued farmers, and most farmers settle because, you know, they don't want to go up against this multi-billion dollar corporation. So that's a, that's a real problem, but one great thing that's happened recently is in February, a, court in, a federal court in San Francisco ruled that GE alfalfa, which was just approved for uh, release last year, had not gone through proper testing procedures, and also there was a threat of contamination of non-GE fields, and so he, he stopped n now as of April 1st, people are no longer allowed to plant GE alfalfa. Now, we don't know what's going to happen down the road with that because it's been tossed back into the lap of the government. Now, the EPA, who, you know, is obviously the people who control the EPA are appointed by, by the Bush administration right now, but it's a very helpful thing that someone in the court system recognizes that the testing hasn't been done, and there's also this real threat of contamination, especially with alfalfa, which is, which is, um, you know, there, it was easily the the contamination could easily be done by wind. So that that's a positive thing that at least it's not completely under the radar anymore. I noticed on the news they're discussing the the health of, um, or ex excuse me, the the safety of eating wheat at this time, uh, concerning uh, the outbreak uh, with pet food. Yeah, you know, the wheat thing is very interesting. Um, they did want to approve GE wheat, and the wheat farmers didn't want it. So they protested, so they haven't approved GE wheat. But, yeah, wheat, you know, I have developed a wheat allergy in the last few years, and a lot of people have, and it's mysterious why that is. It may be that the way that wheat is grown now, that actually um, certain d diseases kind of get more in the soil around it than, it, than would happen if you grew it in a field where you hadn't used, you know, um, chemicals and pesticides. Exactly. And now, I want to get later on in the program into clone animals and, and into the story about the human gene being mixed with, with the rice gene. But before I do that, Ugh. you brought up a lot of important facts. I called last week, and I urged my audience to, to, to follow likewise and do an investigation thoroughly uh, and follow the money trail between people in government and the FDA. Here's a couple of things from your film. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas was Monsanto's lawyer. Also, Donald Rumsfeld was the president of... How do you pronounce this? Uh, Cyril? Cyril. Okay, Cyril. Uh, a subsidiary of Monsanto. And uh, Ashcroft, during the 2000 pres presidential election, received the largest contribution by Monsanto. Yeah. Did I miss well, anything? there's a real revolving door in, <clears throat> you know, we know that now. We're so cynical about the government. And, but, and, and, you know, all our tax dollars, which is a huge amount of money and where it goes and who decides where it goes, but this is happening in agriculture too, and and really, when these corporations want something, they they just get their person put into whatever agency they want to get it 
get them in to get approval, you know, or say, oh, we don't need approval, just go ahead and do it. They go in and rubber stamp what the corporation wants, then they go back into private practice, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's a similar thing that happens with the oil industry and, you know, the stuff around global warming. And as cynical as we are, it, it really is astonishing that that's allowed to happen, you know, that it's, it, it turns into a government by the corporations for the corporations. And one heartening thing is that more and more people are fed up with that. And it doesn't matter if you're progressive or you're conservative. More and more people are, are thinking that corporations have too much power, and, and they do. And it's, it's, I think we're, you know, we're suffering as a people because of that. Excellent point. At where are we in the state of Oregon, I'm sure you know this better than I, on Measure 27? You know, I'm not sure, but I know that Oregon has a lot of, um, you know, or my film's been shown uh, quite a bit up there because there's a lot of small farmers up there. And I think that that's great because um, I'm not sure exactly what that measure is, but I think that there's more and more activism up there because people, you know, they, they, they want, you know, people sure. instinctively, it people want to get their food from people they they sense they know you know they, and and, they and there is there, there is a food, um, yeah they would ra they would rather eat food that's grown in, in the county they live in or the county next door a farm that's near their town or city than they would like to have it shipped from china it, i think so i think that you know oregon is one of those places where people are becoming more and more conscious of it and there's a, a lot of you know amazing work being done up there uh, absolutely. Um, vote yes on 27.org is the website to go and check out the latest developments on Measure 27, which uh, is a bill that, that was defeated at one point, and I'm not sure the status of it right now, but that is to label um, whether a product has genetically modified uh, ingredients or, or seeds, et cetera, et cetera, within the food product you're buying. There's a number of other oh, measures. that's right. I remember that. Yeah, that's up again. Okay, that's great. I wasn't sure what the n name of that was. That's the way out of GE, I think, is to label it. And I think if people, you know, if people think it's so great, they should be proud to label it. You know, it's like saying it has extra calcium or it has, you know, this or that in it. They should be really proud to have that label on it. And if they're afraid to label it, I have to wonder what the hell they're afraid of if they don't want us to know what we're eating. You know, that's a, that's a right. We talk about security. What about food security? And, and, and the ironic thing about, about, those, about those big money commercials that they put out to stop the labeling of that were funded by the same people that are robbing the farmers, Monsanto, right? Put up right, the money right. for people to pose as farmers. It was literally a, a photo op propaganda to say that this is actually going to hurt farmers. Well, I think that, you know, I think that, um, I think the, the one we used in the, in the film, that, that was a farmer, but they kind of, they used a farmer that was very much looked like the person who was who actually was the initiator of the original measure, and so they they kind of wanted to I think maybe confuse people and kind of make it seem like it's all the same. But <clears throat> I think people are concerned that if it's labeled, you know, people who grow GE are afraid that if it's labeled, then people won't want to buy their crops. And hey, then if that's the case, they shouldn't be growing those crops. They shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Again, I think you know. I don't want to eat rice with the human gene in it. I don't want it. I don't want to eat genetically engineered food. So, I'm fortunate. I'm able to to choose organic of of you know the soy and corn that I eat. But I I think you know it just feels to me like it's so obvious that if they're so afraid to label it, you just kind of have to wonder. And and the other thing about their argument was that it's going to be a lot more expensive. Well, all of Europe is labeled. And right. it's not a problem for them. The other thing you know, is they, they also have their own definition for what is organic, which is not yeah. always necessarily the same uh, as, as someone that grows organic food. They, they have uh, different ways they can uh, still have something genetically modified related to the process on some foods. Yeah, well, I think that the whole idea of what's organic is, um, you know, there's the, the interesting kind of controversy now is just because something's grown without pesticide, you know, is it really organic in the way that people originally thought of organic, which is that the, the, the land is treated right and the, the people who work the land are treated right and, and there's a sense of sustainability because you can have something that's organic that's not sustainable if you're, you know, doing a big, huge 
you know, nasty industrial farm, but you just happen to be not using pesticides. I'm, you know, I think it's great they're not using pesticides, but there's also a, a question now about all these other values that we have that we assume goes along with organic that don't necessarily, although in most cases I think they do, because I think if anybody's going to go to the trouble to grow organic, they're just going to have a higher consciousness about how to treat the land and how to treat their workers and everything else. So for those now just tuning in, we are talking about Monsanto owning the seed. And what I find disturbing about this as well, this is really about, this could become another pandemic uh, in a way uh, with the food supply. Because as I understand it, uh, the super weeds uh, that, that result from the spraying of Monsanto Roundup, which actually don't kill Monsanto products or patents, I should say, but everything else around it. With this spreading to other states, it's really a Pandora's box, is it not? This could really lead to a well, catastrophe. Well, that's the thing. You know, P uh, Roundup, which is an herbicide that kills everything green, it is used on what they call Roundup Ready crops. And they're, those crops are genetically engineered, so you can spray them with Roundup, and they don't die. Everything else around them dies, but they don't. And the problem that happens with that is if you repeatedly spray things with something, they naturally develop resistance. So what's happened now with the, a lot of the Roundup Ready crops and, uh, and fields that are growing in is that you have these, these weeds that are resistant to Roundup. So you have to use worse chemicals on those weeds. So, you know, you're spraying Roundup all over the place, which, which I personally and a lot of people think actually damages the whole fertility of the, of the soil, you know, and all the, mic all the microbial activity that's there that creates fertility, that creates a, a, a soil that has nutrition in it. And you end up, you know, you end up killing the soil, poisoning the soil, and then you end up with these weeds that even the Roundup won't kill, and you have to go in there with these, you know, really intense, bad chemicals. So that's, that's the problem. I mean, plants develop resistance. So some of these high-tech fixes don't take that into consideration. And, and then there's a the whole thing of, of monocultures, you know, and the more you grow a monoculture, the more susceptible that monoculture is to disease and the more, you know, the, so there's just a big, you know, the way that agriculture has developed this whole, you know, growing one, one crop and, and, you know, kind of using the field as if it's a factory it's, it's really, you know, agribusiness, right. it's not agriculture. And I think that, you know, more and more people are, are, are wanting to participate in, ag, you know, as consumers, agriculture. That, that's what they want. They want to think that they're, they're feeding their bodies, they're helping their communities, they have a sense of where their food comes from. That, that's a really powerful thing that's happening now in our culture, which is great. Now, this branches out beyond the plant kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, the fruit kingdom. Uh, they are now uh, have the legal right, companies that is, there, there's four, 80% of this nation's food supply comes from uh, meat supply, comes from four companies. And they have now been given the go ahead to clone cows. Uh, they're already modifying fish. They're already modifying pigs and they're modifying chickens. And I'm sure I've left a lot out. For someone wondering, gee, I don't have a problem eating a cloned animal if, I, if it's not modified, but I'll eat a cloned one. This was actually said to me by somebody last week. What health concerns do you think could arise in the next couple years? Well, I think the problem with cloning animals is if you really look at what happens with these clones, you know, a lot of them are deformed. Even Dolly, the first cloned sheep, um, they, they had to kill her when she was quite young because she was these deformities were developing and it, it just seems wrong. I don't understand. I think you know it seems like cloning is going to be more useful. I mean I, I don't I think it's bad, but you know for for very high end animals, animals that are really super breeding animals. Not I, I can't it, the way the technology works. I can't imagine that they're going to have you know, big factory farms full of cloned animals, because it's actually hard to make a clone. They have to make a lot of, they have to try a lot before they get one cloned animal that can actually, you know, walk and, and eat, because they're just horrible deformities. So I think cloning is, you know, I don't even see why anybody would even bother to do that. But uh, and then, you know, genetically engineered animals, they've genetically engineered, you know, mice uh, for the one of the, uh, big lab mice now are called the Harvard mouse, which is patented, which is susceptible to cancer. They've genetically engineered cats, you know, bunnies, you know, the famous fluorescent green bunny. Uh, they've genetically engineered all kinds of things, genetically engineered fish, which as far as I know, they've not been allowed to release except for one 
um, aquarium type fish that was kind of a, you know, fancy fish. But yeah, I think that, you know, I mean, they've done these studies, if they let out genetically engineered salmon, um, those salmon could actually wipe out the natural salmon uh, swimming in the ocean in, in a matter of generations because they've genetically engineered them to be much larger, and so they'll kind of push out the, the non-GE salmon. So it, it's just an extremely controversial issue, and the people that promote genetic engineering in, in, you know, in animals and, and crops, you know, they, they think in molecules. They just are in there in this world, and they're in the laboratory, and they, they think in that. They don't think in ecosystems, and they don't think in, of, of the mutations that might happen. Nature. They don't really think of the system. They just think of this one little thing, and, I, and I've talked to scientists by, uh, who do this, and I know that they mean well, and I know that they think they're doing a good thing, but the problem is the people that control this technology are these corporations. And once it's out of the scientist's hands, it's out there, you know, be, you know, they're out there being whipped along by corporate demand for profit. So it's just, you know, it's an extremely, it's a huge deal to mess with DNA because the, the world that exists now is in balance. You know, things have worked themselves out over millions of years so we can all live fairly well together. You know, everything sort of balances out, and that's why we can be here. And you start adding, making these radical changes, like putting human genes in rice or putting, um, Destroying you know, food uh, for profit, though, most of all. Fundamental. Destroying other seeds, other crops for profit. That's beyond comprehension. Well, food is a special issue, you know, because we all need food. So to expect that food is going to be, you know, completely at the mercy of the marketplace and, you know, that corporations can basically, you know, buy up the food supply, and then what, you know? Then, you know, if they bought all, you know, what they wanted, what they are doing, if they bought up every bit of seed that was for sale, and you know what, they go around in these third world countries, and they buy, they go around to the small farmers, to the peasant farmers, they buy up their seeds at a huge price, and then they come along with their genetically engineered seeds and offer it to them, you know, it's like drugs. Here, the first batch is free. But you can't replant genetically engineered seeds because they're patented, so you have to go back to the corporation every year and buy new seeds or else they'll sue you. It's a huge burden on farmers. So I think, you know, these are big, radical changes that are happening. And what these corporations say is they say, oh, we've been doing this for thousands of years. This is just like making yogurt. And it's not. Not only the, the thing itself, but the whole system that it brings along with it. It really takes away our food security as individuals and as a nation, and we, we need to pay attention. Well, I, I definitely uh, appreciate you coming on, Deborah. I loved interviewing you tonight and would like to do it again in the future for those that are listening. Oh, to that'd one... be great. Great. Well, I, and definitely I want to have more people coming on my show as well. They're dealing with more sustainable, ecological, solution-based because I cover a lot of hard-hitting news concerning the war on terror, 9-11, the police state. Uh, um, in the news reporting. Well, but that's, I, the, that's the thing. You know, there are so many big, giant issues out there that people kind of put food on the back burner, but food is a front burner issue. And I urge your listeners to go to, you know, our website, thefuturefood.com, and you can get links there. We're actually upgrading a little bit, but you can get links there to some really great organizations where you can get more information and find out things that you can do because it's actually really fascinating. And also, you know, if you start getting active in these food issues, you run into some really great people, and, and also the food tends to be really good.